So welcome to another war game review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at an American Civil War game called Lincoln. Yes. Uh, and this is from a collaboration of Plastic Soldier Company games, PSC games, and Worthington Publishing. Uh, Worthington make a lot of kind of historical war games. Mm -hmm. PSC originally started as like a miniatures company, making historical miniatures. Um, and they're branching out to board games, and this is kind of a collaboration between the two. And really doing nice board games. Yes. Like, yes. these are produced nicely, and the couple we've played have been really good games. And this one stands out to me. I mm -hmm. think the collaboration with Worthington was on the publishing side of it. This is a beautiful game. Yes. Uh, you can see the unboxing video that I did. The map on this is gorgeous. The artwork yeah. on the cards is I mean, just, great. just the card backs, just phenomenal. Really well done. Yeah. So Love the stylized writing. Yeah, production quality mm -hmm. is off the chart. Mm -hmm. um, so this American Civil War game um, yeah, focuses... Card-driven game. It's called Lincoln, but yeah. I don't know if Lincoln's in the game. No. <laughs> but, Other than his leadership. Yes. But yeah. uh, it's a CDG. You have cards, and the cards have um, different actions on them. It's you know Some of them say move, some of them say recruit... Some of them give you a bonus in combat through leadership. Others have like text-based events on them. Um, Draw some cards or yes. make your opponent discard a couple cards. And you have faction-specific deck. So there's a CSA deck that's smaller. Um, and then there is a union deck which can get larger. And the nice thing with this is, is you, you have like a starting deck. But then the first time you reshuffle, you put in a new wave of cards. And to... For the historical aspect of this, the CSA puts in slightly worse cards. So a lot of cards that are blank. Yeah, so they're very good. They start off with a better deck than the Union. Mm -hmm. It gets worse over time and degrades with the quality of the cards. The Union deck starts off not as good and gets better over time. So you have to fight your deck and get it to do what you want it to do over the course of the war. Well, and I think thematically, just like you're saying, I feel like the CSA's best chance to win this game is in the first deck of cards. Yes. And early into the second. Once it gets beyond that point, it becomes very difficult because they can't recruit as big of units. Yeah. They also start to lose some of their attack cards. Not as many. You still had a lot of those. But you lose, like, your two and three, the big recruit units. Right. Because you've expended those, typically. Yeah. Whereas They're already the on the board. Whereas getting more of those yep. into the True. deck. And, and that's the interesting part of this game is I'm, I didn't feel like it was super duper scripted, but I think there's some right. good history that you know, tries to, to follow the, the flow of the war. Mm -hmm. Early on, there was this good edge. And the CSA, if they're going to win with a decisive victory, it's going to be early on. Yeah, They have to basically prevent the Union from gaining X amount of victory points, which is yeah. doable with some good defensive strategies and counterattacks and things. Um, but as the, the longer it goes on, the more they're basically holding out for... Yeah. You can still... You win, but it's you win by not being completely wiped from the board, basically, right. is effectively what it is. Well, I, I think the other thing I really liked thematically was... And you already touched on it, but the CSA deck, very specific to how they were in the war. You know, the, the, the Confederates had better leadership, therefore their attack values are better... Yes. They have more fours and fives. The Union... And early on. They and early on. I don't know that I saw a five in our two plays in the Union deck. They have a five in their very last they deck. Do. Shuffle they in, do. And everything else I think is four. Four. So they're, I like that. So it, it, it reflects the better historical leadership yes. for the Confederates. Also, the Confederates early on, I believe, have two or three cavalry charge cards. Yes. Which are really cool cards because they force the Union player to discard... Two random cards. Yes. And it's before battle. So it's like you, you might take my good card that I was going to try to win that battle, and now I've only got a one, and I'm not going to be able to overcome. So I really liked that thematic element. Yeah, well, I'd do a charge to remove some of your cards from your hand so that when I attack, you don't have, I don't have as many cards. Ones, Absolutely. Kind of thing. So really cool little um, part of the game there. And the Union can use port movement. It's kind of difficult to use port it, movement. Yeah, it's expensive to but do that. But when I played the CSA, I had to worry about that every round because I I was worried about uh, Fort Monroe falling behind my lines. So it's something you got to think about. You can't just vacate that. 
I like that. I thought that was very historic. Yes. I, th one of the things that I enjoyed was, like you said, the difference between the two decks. So you have all those cards you talk about in the CSA deck, mm -hmm. but the Union deck doesn't have as many of those or doesn't have them at all, but they have different cards. So they have lots of cards where um, it's called like a draft. You literally, you can recruit more guys at a cheaper cost. So you can get more guys out. Mm -hmm. or, and they have like their paper money cards doing yes. a similar type of thing. They have fewer of those defensive cards, the high ground ones I felt. The uh, CSA has a bunch. Yes. A uh, bunch of those cards. But I think, I want to say the Union has far more of the railroad movement cards. They do. They control the main yep. kind of railroads. So there's, they have more opportunities to do effectively strategic type movements across the whole map. So yeah. it was just very interesting how the two decks were so different mm -hmm. in such um, an approachable game. Yeah. That's this. This is not an overly complex game. The rule book is small and not many pages. The rules are very easy to learn. Don't think there was many times where we had any confusion really. Just a couple of times I think we looked at a card's text and it wasn't clear until we got into the right. meat of the rule book. And there's a reference for all the cards with great detail. Yeah. So anytime the card was just like, you can move a guy who's connected. Well, the book specifies it has to be from Jason. Jason connected. Yeah. And that was one I was like, ooh, I, I used that wrong. <laughs> and you were like, nope. And I'm like, come on. The, the other thing I really like, these two tracks they have on the side. One is called the Europe track. And it is, in essence, the Confederates doing well enough by, I don't know, manipulating this track by winning victories. Yeah, by defeating the Union, basically. Right. Or by you can use the cards to kind of move that generically yeah, buy, like buying favor from Europe so that was kind of cool because I remember in my head in our first play I was thinking "Ooh, I'm only two away from an automatic victory how do I plan that fortunately I think I fought you oh yeah well, I you lost, lost three counters and but I also had a card in my hand that I could have then followed up to move that so I liked that the blockade track we did not get into as much yeah. it's hard to do it's expensive that's why it's a the blockade the Union player can put resources into that, and over time it reduces the hand of the right. of the CSA player, but it also scores them victory points. Yeah, and great. You may be in a, to be hand. You may be in a pinch because the other thing I thought was cool is at the end of each deck, the Union player had to have a certain amount of victories. Yes. At the end of the first deck, they had to have two victory points. Two. And that sounds like not much, but that's you have to it's, done it's, quite a lot. You have to take at least two places or move this down three spots. So I thought to myself, boy, this would be nice to have this down here because it would be a source of victory points yes. that you couldn't necessarily easily defeat. So I liked that. I thought that was well incorporated. But this is very expensive. Oh, you and have to I discard two cards. You have to commit to that yes. strategy. You would have to start that very early, yeah. commit to it, and drive that deck down. And I'm telling you, if you were only getting three cards, oh, it, it would it would be over. Yeah, it's going to it's gonna snowball and you yeah. just don't be able to do anything. But I, that's really, there's a lot of cool stuff in this game, yet it's so simple. Oh, so simple. Um, Rules-wise, it is easy to learn. I know you talked, oh, Paisley could play this. She could play this, whether she would want to. Well, so question. Uh, yeah. I don't know if she's going to be that into it or want to do it because of the theme, but... But rules-wise... It's simple enough that she could. Anyone could pick this up. Yes. It's um, advertised 14 plus. Yeah, this is, a, to me, an introductory war game. Agreed. Um, and... The, the the complexity comes from your choices. Yeah. A lot of choices with all your cards, and then you've got this st strategic aspect on the board as well. How you're using your cards to do what and where. A well, little, little bit of counting numbers and stacks yeah. and things like that. There's two really beautiful parts about this design, I think. One is that strategic movement and the strategic element. Up here in the Shenandoah Valley, we were kind of, both of us, I played the CSA and you played the CSA during our second game, and we were kind of moving just to divert attention. And it really works. Yes. So I think that's beautiful. I think it's replicated very well, the way these connections are made. The second beautiful part of the design, I think, was the attritional loss uh, for stacks. Yes. You don't roll dice. You're using the value of your stack, the value of any entrenchments or fortifications, forts. They have some natural yeah, plus nice ones. Defensive and your card values, but it's really cool because when you win, you lose half your counters, not your strength points, half your counters rounded down, 
Round it down if you win. Win. Round it up, up if, you, if lose. you lose. So if you, I, I thought that was beautiful. I, I thought it was very elegant. I loved sitting there looking at my stacks, going, mm, "I can attack because I've got seven seven units. I'm not going to lose an extra unit." You, you know, it was kind of. It's like that analysis of disaster. And then you start building your stacks. Well, I've got like, you know, I've got a couple of big threes. I want to throw in some one guys. Just so I can lose them. Yeah. So they can be the ones that die. It's a, there's just some really cool aspects to that. And what we'll very do well is done. I'm going to show you the board and a little bit just how the combat works. Because it's very simple. But you get to see the beautiful board. Uh, and then very we'll wrap nice. up with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. Um, as you can see, it's kind of like the east coast and um, a significant part of the um, midwest of the United States as well. Um, so you got Florida down here, all the way up to kind of the the highest kind of cities elevation wise. You got Washington up there, and you also have Gettysburg up top here, and then you go as far as um, Cairo, Illinois. You got Fort Henry and Donaldson and Corinth down here as well, all the way down to Vicksburg and New Orleans. So that's kind of the extent of the map. But as you can see, there's not a lot on there. The map is beautiful. I love this board. It looks absolutely great on the table. This is one of those put it in a picture frame and hang it up on the wall kind of maps. But the reality is, is playing space wise, it's a point to point movement. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, like 20 spaces. There's these three extra kind of movement spaces for the Union only. But really, this is 20 spots that you're fighting over. And as you can see on the board, this is how one of our games ended. Um, these are big Union stacks down here. Uh, we ran out of time, but. It was pretty much inevitable the CSA was going to lose here. And we, there was probably only maybe four or five hands left, but we, we had to call it, so I, I um, conceded as the CSA player. But the Union are trying to take Richmond and Vicksburg. If they can take both of those, they win the game. Um, if they fail to do so, then they need to have accrued 12 victory points by the end of the game. Now, a lot of these spaces have one, 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 two, 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 three, two, one. So there's victory points to be had, but to get 12, you'd need almost all of them if you were just doing that. But if you look at this blockade track down here, it's possible for the Union player to earn up to five victory points from here. So if they can instill a really strong blockade, they only need to take a, a, a small number because you then would say, the the CSA are going to be starved, they don't have any resources, they're going to have to um, kind of concede or call for armistice at the end of, you know, when their supplies run out at some point. So it, they're inevitably going to lose. Um, that's kind of how you'd see that as. But the way the map is laid out is very interesting because you have, you know, a couple ones over here, but up in this kind of, what I don't think I'm going to call it a metropolitan area, but you've got this um, dense... Um, concentration of areas. Some of these are really strong. Some of these are much more established cities. Um, but this is worth, Richmond's worth three. Um, you've got Newmarket's worth two. And then over here, Fredericksburg's worth one as well. So you have kind of a cluster over there. And then you have this kind of, this is almost like a cascade of joined ones. So you, you have this fighting out on kind of the frontiers and the plains, but really, in a Shenandoah Valley over here, this is where a ton of the fighting and maneuvering is going to be done. Um, it, it's almost like two different separate battles. Because for to get you know troops from one to the other, you're going to have to have taken Savannah. And if if the Union player can, through port landings, naval landings, or through crushing one of these fronts, can get to Savannah, it's all but over for the CFA player at that point. It's just a matter of time. But as you can see, beautiful. The stacks are really simple. Um, the pieces are just that one, two, or three. And these are kind of the gray um, CSA pieces. And the Union pieces have all the same values. But they're these nice kind of blue ones here. Outside of that, the uh, Confederate player has the opportunity through card play to play some of these static forts. These give you a three value, but they're static. 
but but that's really it. That's the playing pieces. The flags are just markers for control. Uh, when you take someone else's territory, because you can see there's the yellow ones, those start under Confederate control, and the kind of these blue purple ones start under Union control. That, that's it. There's not a lot to it. The rest of the game is in these cards. There's two decks of cards. We want to show you the artwork because it's beautiful. This is just the backs of the cards. So you've got these Union ones here, and the CSA ones here, but just the, the artwork is so well done. We love it just from that standpoint. And it's kind of a, it's not entirely a typical CDG, but it is at the same time. So this is the Union deck. You can see on the card there's a whole bunch of stuff. So you can either use this card for this top part, which is put down a three strength army, but it costs you two cards if you have to discard cards from your hand. That's a resource. Or you can do it for the event, which is a cavalry raid. Costs an action, you only have two in a turn, and you can force the opposing player to discard a couple cards. Unless they have a cavalry raid that they can play out of turn to kind of counter charge. So they would nullify each other. Sometimes you have a very simple card like this. Again, you can use this to build a three strength army. Costs two cards to do so. Or you can use it for this value. When you make an attack, you put a card face down. This two is, it's a leadership value, two star general. He's gonna get added to the strength of your forces that are in a stack. So I have this stack. The opposing player has the opportunity to play a card. We reveal all the cards, it's added to the stack. That's your total score, whoever's got the most wins. Really, really simple combat in that way. On this card, again, can be used for the top, can be used for leadership, or this one here can be used for movement. To move your armies, you have to have cards. So I just play the card, I discard it. I can either move one unit anywhere connected on the board that I have kind of supply through or control, or I can move an entire stack one adjacent space. And you just move along the railroads doing that. As soon as you move into an enemy opposing space, combat automatically happens. Um, if you're ever in a contested space, so you're kind of both in a, in a space, you'll look here, the space is divided in half. It's possible that you can both be in the space. It, uh, it can cost an action to do that if you're not moving in. Um, but if you move in, you just automatically get to do the attack for free. So there's some, uh, some decision making to be had about when to attack, when to, when to withdraw, because how you enter the spaces is, is important. So the Union players in here, if the CSA player bring a bunch of guys on this railroad, they're going to come in on this bottom half. So the fight's going to happen right here. If the Union player chooses to withdraw, they can go back to this space. So then we're on either side of this space. But this becomes, this is really important now. Because if, for example, we'll kind of pretend that this wasn't the case, if the... Uh, if the CSA player had guys here, well now this guy has no route of retreat. He can't retreat back in here, and he can't retreat out this way because these two connections are from the bottom half, which the CSA player kind of is in. So if this battle goes poorly, the CSA player would have to retreat. They would just be eliminated. So you have some really cool maneuvering, especially up here in this, in this part just because there's a lot of connections and, and everything's connected. You can really, you can retreat here or there, be a little bit nifty, but you can also corner people and get them out. There's just some really neat mechanics to this game. And it's very, very simple. Um, the blockade, let's see. Let's get some blockade cards out. So this one's a blockade card here. I can adjust the blockade marker one space, but it costs me two cards to do that. Spin two cards, I move this down one. And at first, this does nothing. When I start getting down here, I get a victory point. If I get down here, I have a victory point, but I also um, reduce the CSA hand limit to four. And you can get it all the way down to three, but you've got four VPs as well. So this is incredibly expensive investment wise, but if you can get it to go, you can really like tighten the screws. But you have to tell yourself, how much I'm committing to this, I will have that fewer units or be able to do less tactically on the board. So there's some really nice, pretty tough decision making to have to be made, I'll be honest. But honestly, it's a very, very 
simple game, but the choices come from what you're doing. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of initiate a quick combat here. Let's say, we, just for the sake of it, we're here. So if the CSA player plays a card, they move this little stack of three guys down here. You would never do this because it's terrible odds. As soon as they move in, we're in this, remember, we, they're coming in on this top half, so we're both in the top half. As soon as you move in, you, the CSA player has to play a card. You have to play an attack card. So that's kind of, a, not like a penalty, but like, you have to be very judicious about how and when you attack with the number of cards you have. So we're going to play this. It's got a four leadership. Oop, I play that face down. Once that's played face down, like this is them committing to doing the attack. The union player has an, has an option here. They can either entirely retreat, which in this instance they can't. There's nowhere for them to retreat to because this is held as the only other connection is held through Richmond. So they might choose to withdraw. If they do, no fighting occurs and this card is wasted. So there's again a little bit of trying to bluff and double bluff your opponent because, well now, the CSA just wasted their good four-star general on that card. But, well then for, uh, uh, there's, uh, you know, each player has two actions on their turn. For the second action, um, the CSA player is going to declare to kind of push the attack. They're going to attack again because they know the Union player has nowhere to retreat to. There's nowhere to get out unless they have this, unless they have some maritime retreat cards. So there are some naval movement cards here the Union has. But for each one card, you can move one unit. So you've got to have a bunch of them, and you can see there's not all that many. Or well, they're attached to really good generals and really good events. You have to be very careful about how and when you use those. Let's say they don't have any, so we're just going to do a combat. So Union player attacks, Union player will play general down. Boop. Because you have to as the attacker always play one first. Oh, that's the CSA, sorry. Union player is going to choose from their hand of cards. Let's say they're going to play their three-star general. Because that's all they have. Not great, but that's what we're going to do. You just flip them over, and you tabulate the scores. So the CSA had a five-star general. Awesome. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Union player had a three-star general. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah. So even with their best general, they didn't have enough power and couldn't overcome um, what was going on here. So, in this instance, the CSA player loses. And when you lose, you, you're, you just lose the number of counters, half of them rounded up. So, half rounded up is two, we're going to lose our two weak counters. Now, winning sounds great, but the winner loses half their counters rounded down. So if you have an odd number, if, if the Union player had three, they don't lose one. Well, they have four, so they're still going to lose two. So actually, this was a pretty decent engagement for, for the Union player, for the CSA. Not ideal, but not, you know, could have been a lot worse. So they have to retreat back to where they came from, and the Union remains, retains control of Savannah. These cards are discarded, and that's that. But that, that's how combat works, right? If the CSA player had won and forced a retreat for the Union, the Union player's got nowhere to retreat to, because we'll just we'll theorize they don't have enough cards to do that with. Or if they have one, right? So they had one maritime card, they can retreat one guy through this port to another controlled port. The only other one they control is Washington. So one guy can escape, this guy is totally destroyed, and then this reverts back to CSA control. So these two victory points the Union player had gone away now. Union player is the only one that scores victory points. The Union player has to be proactive at going and taking territory and installing the blockade to win. But, but that's the game, right? It comes it's very simple. There's no dice rolling. You just kind of have your stack. And you, you do keep counting them a little bit, but it's pretty simple. And then it's, do I have those big generals to do that? And it's, does my opponent have generals in their hand? When am I doing this? When am I not doing this? There's a few cards out there, like reinforcements, where you could bring in someone from an adjacent space. So I'm doing this attack, well I can bring in, you know, my number three counter down here from an adjacent connected space. Great, now I'm a five. I'm gonna dominate them. Or you have, if you're playing defensively, 
If you're being attacked, you can play this, and it gives you a plus two value. You have a high ground. Simple things like that. But the cards have, give you a lot of choice, but the economy is, if I want to, if I want to build a three unit army, I can put it out, great. I put it somewhere where I control, so I'll put them up here in Washington, for example. But when I do that, this card, the one that I built from, is permanently removed from the game. And remember, this was also a cavalry raid, a very important event. So that's gone forever, and that two card cost, I have to discard two more cards out of my hand to pay for that. They're not removed from the game, so they'll come back up, but then you're like, great, I have like one card left. So that economy is very, very important. And it becomes more important because the, the Union player has three deck reshuffles before the game ends. The CSA, they can reshuffle their decks as many times as they want. They're just trying to cling on for dear life. But once the Union player shuffles their, oh, shuffles their deck, it's they shuffle the deck the second time, and once they run out of cards subsequently, the game is over, and if they don't have 12 victory points, they lose. So, really, really interesting game. Um, we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts here. So that was a look at the board, and just how some of the fighting and movement works. Um, I, it was a great game. I just, yeah. We, I haven't played many American Civil War games, but I'm glad I started here because this is very easy, very approachable, but cool. And it works, right? It's, it the works very well. It works. You've always got choices and decisions to make. And... The, Ollie thinks it works, too. Yes, he does. And, the, <laughs> and I, I felt like the way the game... The, like the, uh, the timeline of the game with how the decks change yeah. over the course of the war, I think that is a really good design that works. Yeah. Sometimes... When you, you try to force things in games to, to mimic history, I feel that did it quite seamlessly. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you 100%. I think this is a very good, playable game. I, I think it's a it's an entry-level game, but it has a lot of meat to it. Yeah. This You're is going fun. to enjoy this whether you've played 100 other ACW games or only one, because you're going to get a good feel for what the war was like. I think, as far as the movement, the attrition, very cool. The, the use of rail, the use of ports, I, I thought it was very well done. If there's anything that I would say I didn't like about it, the only thing I didn't like about it was anytime you play this kind of game and it becomes a numbers game where you're trying to analyze in battle, you know, it. it I felt like sometimes the battle was over even before we started. Yes. And, and that was the only thing. I think I said to you, what did I say to you? It's like, there's no, let's go for glory. Yeah. Because there's no roll of a D6. And, and that's the only, and I'm surprised I'm saying that, because sometimes dice are so pitifully bad. But that's the only thing. Because we would sit here and calculate, and I knew you only had a five in your hand. Yeah. No higher than a five. No so higher than a like, five. Oh, I I've won. got a defensive card of a two. Yeah. If you've got more than seven on me, I'm going to lose. But then the choice is, is do I stand and fight and just kill your stack? You right. lose half, or do I tactically retreat? So there's decisions to be made. Yeah, but that's a great part of the game that's very frustrating oh, yeah. too, and I like that part. You don't have the dice, which I actually really enjoyed. Right, because there was there there were times where you're like I cannot make this attack. Yeah, I have to wait. Yeah, but the longer I wait, the more you bring in reinforcements. I can put an extra like, unit. Yeah, that's what trying to do it. So so that was the only thing I didn't kind of like that it was almost a mathematical exercise to. But it was still cool though, because there's still the unknown. But yeah, there's making still that the unknown. Work. I see. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I thought that was cool. I think I enjoyed it too. But I, that it was just it was we don't anti play many games like that. No, and I felt like it was just anticlimactic. You Does want that make sense? Roll. Yeah, because I I knew oh I'm gonna win. There's no way I'm gonna lose because of the numbers. And that was fine. It was a good game. It this was a very good game. It's a fun. This, I would put this in the beer and pretzels category. Agree. Yep. No CRTs. No, no super complex things. There is some crunchiness and just calculating your numbers. But, it's, but I've got a stack of guys. Here's my value. Moving them in. Let's, yeah. roll, let's yeah. fight. Put my cards down. This is just a fun, enjoyable yeah. game. Get this out when you have 90 minutes and you just want to have a good time. It can't see it. Sometimes it can be longer than that. 
Oh, again. Especially if you think about the cons yeah. and you play through all three decks to the end. Yeah. You could make this... In a, it's advertised 90 to two, ninety to 120. Yeah, I would probably... Maybe you, a little longer. I think we went a little bit longer on our second one. Yeah. We got around to the very, very end of the last deck. But... But a great game. Yeah, the first game we played was like an hour, hour yeah. at most. And I got luckily well. and did the Confederate Europe yeah. victory. The only other thing I would say, I would love to see a victory point track for the Union. Just being able to track that... So you're not having to count every time, but that's part of the that's part of it though too, right? It's thematic that you're kind of having to sur survey the battlefield to see where you stand. But it would have been easy to have just a little victory track here. Yeah. I think the other thing it would have been nice to have a battle card that I could slide so I know what our numbers were, so we didn't have to keep. Yeah, I'm I felt like every time stack. We, yeah. we put a card down. Okay, recap. Yeah, I got So it's like maybe I could have just had a little slider. Charge me ten dollars more. Put four or five sliders in there. J just a, that's like a, yeah, a, a dream. But but yeah, this great is game. A, this is a fun game. This is Lincoln from uh, PSC Games and Worthington Publishing. So if you have any interest, check this out. I had a blast playing this me beautiful too. game. Um, and we've been at theplayersaid.com. Thank you.